My name is Osman Shebe, I born in White Medani, 1940. My father, my father was a botanical, and uh, I wish my childhood in southern Sudan, 1952, this nineteen till nineteen uh, sixty one. I have the uh, elementary and uh, intermediate school in Malakal, Southern Sudan, Upper Nile, and then from there have fear in a Hochschule for Kunz. Khartoum, and then I came to Berlin here, six years old, and in the exact ten years of academic kunz. And my work here is six and fifty years old, from 1995 to 2000, until now. Und jetzt will ich meine Arbeit, kam ich in Berlin nach, nach ungefähr äh, 40 Jahren danach. Und will ich diese Kunst hier einstellen, zu sehen, wie weit ich in meinen in gesamten Jahren hier und meine Standard und ich habe verschiedene, verschiedene Styles. Und meine, meine äh, Sache, äh, mein Hauptthema ist äh, Human and Animal Rights. Und ich habe different Paintings über verschiedene Menschen in der Welt. Die haben ihr Reit bekommen. Und deswegen, ich will sehen, was passiert danach. Mein Name ist Miade Schiebier. Ich bin die Tochter von Professor Osman Schiebier. Und Seit neuem auch äh, die Galerieleiterin. Ähm, ich habe die Kunst aus dem Sudan bekommen, um unser kulturelles Erbe als Land Sudan und als Familie Schiebe weiterzuführen und der internationalen Gemeinschaft vorzustellen. Herr Schiebe, um, can, you tell, can you tell us what is unique about your was ist speziell über deine Kunst? Speziell mein Kunst ist für Human and Animal Rights zu zeigen. Und uh, in different ways and colors and uh, technique. Und uh, ich habe uh, in einem meiner Bilder Uh, alle Sorten für, für, für Kunst, uh, die, die, die uh, uh, Realistik und Impressionismus und uh, uh, Abstrakt und uh, Serialismus. Und ich will, jeder Mensch kann sehen, was er will in meinen Bildern zufrieden. Und ich habe in meiner alten Zeit fange ich mit komplizierter äh, Serialismus. Das ist für mich. Ich, ich habe die Menschen gegeben äh, von meiner Kunst und ich will danach für mich selber. Meine Kunst für mich selber. Die äh, äh, Serialismus ja, ein schwerer Serialismus, 
Das ist mein Gefühl rein, ich will kein Mensch zeigen. Ja. Ähm. Ähm, auch, ähm, auch hat er eine persönliche ähm, akademische Recherche von äh, ursprünglicher afrikanischer Kunst in ähm, akademische Form ähm, und Selbstentwicklung mit seinen akademischen Professoren ähm, über 50 Jahre getätigt. Und ähm, es soll jetzt international gesehen werden, weil wenn es im Sudan ist, dann ist es sehr schwer, dass Menschen das sehen. Wir wünschen uns, dass die internationale Gemeinschaft ähm, auch einen Blick drauf wirft und es genießt und dass es für jeder Mensch zugänglich ist. Und die verschiedenen Stile, die äh, mein Vater Professor Schiebel auch zusammengefügt hat, ist auch wegen ähm, Zeit, Zeit, dass nicht ähm, genug vorhanden war, um jeden Stil äh, einzeln zu studieren, aber seine Spez sein Spezialbereich ist Surrealismus. Und ähm, er möchte auch ähm, dafür dastehen, dass viele Menschen durch Kriege, durch Armut, ähm, durch andere Gründe auch ihre Menschenrechte nicht bekommen. Das ist für ihn ein sehr starkes äh, Gefühl und das drückt er in seinen Bildern aus, äh, weil es ihn sehr bewegt. Ähm, von den Farben her ähm, würde ich sagen, sind seine zwei Lieblingsfarben weiß und blau. Äh, weiß ist ein Friedensfarbe, das ist deshalb, weil er das benutzt. Und das Blaue ist wegen ähm, dem blauen Nil, wo er eigentlich herkommt und seine Wurzeln her sind. Beautiful. Uh, do you think African art and artists are giving their due recognition in the international art scene? I think not more. Mm. They didn't give uh, enough. Uh, I, I'm trying. To do, to do my best, uh, to, to, to let the whole world, was is African intelligence and cloak. Mm -hmm. Und die sehen Farbe natürlich. Yeah. Die sehen Farbe natürlich. Um. Für uns beide, wenn wir das diskutiert haben, haben wir ähm, auch empfunden, dass nicht, äh, ähm, it's not, African art is not always enough exposed, I think. There is great talent, there is great styles, there is individualism, there is personalities. And what we felt also with the art of the Shibir Nailote Gallery, is that the access to this art itself was quite complicated being in Africa and not having all the tools to be exposed um, is quite um, difficult for most artists and even for intellectuals to get their art and their expression across and we hope by transferring it to Berlin um, Even as an individual, my father would be exposed more, firstly, but also introduce um, not only African, but also Sudanese modern art, but also African modern art in his own way. Uh, because the most important thing is for us to contribute a little bit to the continent and to participate in the contemporary world art scene. Um. <coughs> I see in your art there are a lot of information, there are a lot of expression, and there are a lot of message. Do you think art can be uh, a tool? Should art be a tool for revolution? Um, My art. أنا الشغل بتاعي سياسي من نظرة أكاديمية يعني فيها 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 
عبغرية ما زي لما أنا أجيب لك زور بيضرب فيه وبالكلب وبالغير وبالغير مم. لا أنا وديته بطريقة أدبية عشان أبرزه إن إن أكاديمي كوي. Um, he finds that art is a tool. It's a tool, uh, a political tool, a very strong one. Just as much as poetry is a tool with words, with forms, with expression, it's a very strong tool politically. And what he tried to do is, instead of uh, drawing or painting the obvious, he tried in his own surrealistic way to express his political views or um, any kind of world events in his own way and form. In, academic in an academic way. level. Mm -hmm. So do you think um, you bring in your work to Germany? Because I see over 300 work of art you brought from Sudan to Germany. Uh, are you expecting to spark a kind of so, um, a light? What are you trying to spark in the hearts? Are you trying to spark um, a kind of um, intellectual knowledge, self-knowledge in the hearts of um, kids, African kids that are born here, um, black people in the diaspora. Do you think, is that, is that your reason for bringing this art to, to you? The whole point for Shirolana, as she had of Tati, had been I a master of art. Mm -hmm. وقعد بين تحت أن هذا الشخص أي شغل بعد الكلية دي يعمله يكون the standard of this college. That's why in each of these art normals in Berlin, society and all the affairs and all the كلية بتاعتي. أجي وأعمل معرض في الكلية بتاعتي للأفارة. After having obtained the master in the University of Berlin of the Arts, um, having done his own part or his own academic kind of research and development himself, he's bringing back his art to where it originated. Because what he starts here is also um, a kind of thank you to Berlin in a way because that's where he did his last academic journey, but at the same time bringing it back to um, Africans outside of Africa to also be encouraged and to also see um, what can be, um, if you go your way, if you consist on your way, that you can become who you want to be and achieve what you want to achieve and also have access to African art and hopefully be inspired. Beautiful. Um, do you have any, uh, among your work, one of your work, your artwork that, um, that address the Africans in the diaspora and also it does a, a, a frame that has information for Africans in their diasporas and Africans back home, the motherland. So do you have a work like that? that Hast du ein Stück für ähm, Afrikaner im Ausland und ähm, in Afrika, was so an deinem Gefühl? Ja, ich habe ich hab ein Bild gemacht. Ja, mein mein äh, oh, mein äh, mein Medina. العزيزة اللي عمري أنا ذاتي وقضيته يعني عمري اللي هي برلين وعندي اللوحة بتاعت برلين. Mm. Um, he has one painting which sums up his own person. All my life, Berlin. Yeah. yeah, his own personal kind of feel of being outside of Africa and the feeling he brought along from Africa. Um, and one small message that my father also told me earlier is for Africans to always be rooted to their own art, to their own creativity, um, to their own beings and just be brave enough to express themselves the way they think they want to but also to um, absorb 
what you have in Africa or what you absorb outside of Africa and become who you want to be and express yourself uh, freely with everything you have as well. Uh, so encouraging African art, African artists to um, feel and combine cultures and express themselves widely. Um, do, you, do you see any changes? Do you see improvement from your time in Berlin and now? Yes, great. Yeah, this is a crucial difference. Mm. Berlin, ما عادت Berlin القديمة. Mm -hmm. يعني it's been untouched. Mm -hmm. كنت دائرة أكون Berlin القديمة أشوفها. <تصفيق> لكن Berlin تغيرت. Mm -hmm. في إحساسي mm -hmm. لسه أنا. Mm -hmm. الإحساس بتاعي ما كملته. Mm -hmm. نحن Berlin القديمة. Mm -hmm. الناس بتاعينا. Mm. الأتموسير بتاعه mm. الحياة اللي عشتها عملت مية اللوحة mm. برلين زي ريس شارس قال لك all my 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 all my life اللي حياتي كلها أحسن حياة عشتها mm. في حياتي ما بترجع تاني برلين mm. عشان برلين yeah it changed uh, for him a lot he's a little bit disappointed because in his time when he was in Berlin there was a different vibe also and he's craving that because um, intellectually all the people who were around him are completely different and it wasn't as full as it's now because there's more people as well here and the painting somehow reminds him of that vibe he used to feel um, and he somehow feels that he hasn't completed his idea or his feel towards Berlin, but is quite rattled in a way to find that everything has changed and it's so fast changing that he can't really keep up with all the things that are happening or the people that are coming. But in the end of the day, this is how um, countries modernized, this is how countries changed, this is how vibe changed and things always change because it's a generation thing. Now, I'd like to ask a question. Have, have the black community moved in a positive direction for you, do you see? Or is it going, is it retrogressing or progressing? The mm. black community, it قدمت بالنسبة لك هنا في Almania? Yes, yes. The man can feel أفارغ الكتار يعني مم. وأنا أول زول دخلت كلر مم. دخلت الكلية دي مم. الزمن ده ما كان في أفارغ الكتار ومن الناحية الفنية من الناحية الفنية برضو لكن حس أنا لما جيت راجع لقيت كمية من الأفارغ ذات مينز أنه الأفارغ اتجهوا للعلم مم. في أوروبا عشان يكسبوا الآخر تكنيك آخر موضة آخر غير مم. غيره عشان يرجعوا لبلدهم Mm. Um, he said in a positive way the changes because when he was in Berlin firstly there were very few Africans and now that he sees so many Africans in Berlin he sees this as a positive sign because um, he thinks uh, academically study-wise or art-wise they are competing and going really fast forward and so Africa is also um, going forward with new ideas, with designs, with fashion, with art, with politics um, in the same way that was probably a bit slower in his time but also the multicultural aspect of Berlin is for him very intriguing. Beautiful. Um... In your time, you, when you, your time in Berlin, your earlier stage in Berlin, you founded an organization in Berlin, a Sudanese, a Sudanese organization in Berlin. Tell us about that. What was what was the purpose of the organization and why? Then Sudanese Verein, was du gegründet hast mit Anka Salah, der Sudanese Verein, mit den Kultur und Tanz so geht's. Ach kann. في صلاح ولا 
يعني عشان تتكلم انت صلاح هو اول هو مسلم براذر مودرن ما متعصب وهو عمل اول ستودنت يونيون ان اوروبا ان ان برلين ومحمد نور سعد اللي توفى العمل هنا العسكري ذا كان رئيس الرابطه وكنا نحن ناس يعني سودانيه كلهم جادين في القرايه وكنا ما كتار يعني زي 10 ولا 15 مم. نفر في برلين شايف كيف؟ They created the first um, student union um, in Europe for Sudanese because they were all studying um, but somehow needed to unite and get to know each other. His friend, uh, Mr. Salah Abdullahi, which is a friend to this current day over 50 years, um, um, did this union with some other friends um, and wanted to also bring Sudanese culture as much as bring people together okay. in that union. Sudanese and African, yeah. Yeah. So, this is all about the relationship of the people. We are the people who are <تصفيق> واكاديميين متحضرين <تصفيق> عشان كده اي زول يغلط ولا غيره <تصفيق> نحن بنوجهه <تصفيق> حتى الناس اللي بيجوا جداد <تصفيق> وما شافوا الحياه <تصفيق> في المانيا يعني البيهيفير <تصفيق> يعني بنات ولا اقل له ادب على زول الحاجه دي <تصفيق> نحن انضباط بعدين كانوا بيجونا ناس من شرق اوروبا الشرقيه <تصفيق> اي واحد يعمل اي خلل نحن بنسلمه البوليس ويطلعوا برا المانيا <تصفيق> عشان تكير Hmm. It's also about reputation of Sudanese reputation, meaning um, being there for each other, having a community, and it was also um, having direction for each other so that people don't get lost along the way, but have always people to get back to. For example, if um, people come to Berlin from different kind of European countries and stuff, they always make sure that the representation of Sudan behavior wise and culturally um, is there's always somebody to guide you. So if anybody would fall out of place or have any sort of um, issues or things like that, they will uh, hold that person, they will catch that person and make sure that the community and the um, youngsters don't get lost, for example, in drugs, in stuff like that. You always had people who yeah. are um, um, like your brothers, like your family. And if somebody would do something really bad, they would make sure that um, the authorities get to know so, um, so that um, they live in harmony in Europe and maintain a high standard behavior, a uh, kind of behavior, but also how to present themselves. They didn't want to have kind of um, a bad image. So they stuck together to make sure that um, everybody is well looked after as well. Beautiful. Um, so is, is there any freedom of expression in Sudan can you truly and freely narrate with art the history of the war in Sudan? I think that the expression in Sudan is a expression in Sudan. And the expression in Sudan is a expression in Sudan. I think that the expression in Sudan is a expression in وإذا الإنسان ما حس بالناس الحول والناس المصدومين الحول وغيره ما ممكن يكون ما ممكن يكون إنسان ولا يمكن يكون أرتست. He said he never really looked for um, acceptance of any form of political body to express himself. He doesn't feel that he needs that. He thinks he has the right to express his political, personal and artistic views 
and he did so his whole life. And he also expressed the war in Sudan in his paintings, the way he sees or feels it. And he said, if you stop yourself from expressing your own views, um, it would be not only a shame, but you would actually lose a big piece out of your own person um, by pulling back what you actually want to say. And his biggest way of, express, of expression is the war in, because he lived in both South and North Sudan, the war and everything that happens in Sudan he expresses that in paintings because it helps him to deal with all the traumas as well, as much as giving everybody a, a representation and a voice who don't have voices or who are not heard. Uh, have you had any body, any uh, politician, any organization, anybody react to a painting about the situation in Sudan, have you had anybody reacted from that or has you have, have you had anything from the government pertaining your painting? Inta hasal fi ay body hakumiya jad galat inta al fan bitaq da ma ma mamnu wa la ma muafkin ala wa la haya. Ma fi zul gali kalam da wa la ana inti contacts akra al contacts ma al hakumat akra al officials da baadiri. ما وما حصل طلبت منه مم. مساعدة ولا غيره مم. أنا ضررت أنه الفن بتاعي ده يمشي بره لأنه بيختلف عن أي حاجة وحاسيسية وغيره وغيره مم. وما شيء بره للعالم مم. ودي رسالتي أنا He actually did not expose his art as much he concentrated on developing the art and expressing the art and he said he did not ask for any opinion and he did not expose himself to get an opinion because what he wanted to do is um, a collection that is for everyone regardless of whether you're Sudanese, African, European and to get his subject of human rights and animal rights across so he's, he... Um, had his gallery in Sudan, but it was with appointment only. And he chose whom he exposes anything to, because in the wider, in the wider uh, picture, he did not want um, sort of to get in touch as much or to be politicized by non-artists or non-academics. He preferred to have his colleagues and his professors analyze his work and concentrate on his academic approach and academic work. So that later on, the younger generations and people from Sudan or Africa can then discuss his art or treat it also academically and politically and everybody um, can choose what he takes out of the art or what he thinks about the art. But it wasn't open for the public generally. He was just concentrating on completing his personal project in the field. Um, can you tell us about your gallery in Sudan? and? Um what kind of people you invite to your gala to see your work, and what are the criteria for choosing those people? I tamarata al 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 nuzum al Sudaniya wa al fan al Sudani, because the fan bi tamazaj al tamazaj al Sudani, wa ana min tal tasanawi ba yirift bi kasu vanko wa gharu gharu wa gharrta an ana amshi. للفن العالمي عشان كذا انا ما بعمل معارض في السودان للسودانيه لانه انا شغال على هاي ليفل لاوروبا وللعالم هي ام ذا كرايتيريا فور ام كامينج بين ايبل تو كام تو ذا جاليري از ايذر يو ار ا ستودنت يو دوينج ا بي اتش دي His criteria was the people he chose 
um, people who analyze his work want to discuss his work, but also coming with project, he had an office in there. Um, for his students and his master's students and his PhD students and his bachelor's students to come and discuss all their work and discuss his work. And also diplomats were um, invited if they wanted, are interested to see, because for him, the most important thing was to rebel against um, the normal Sudanese or the typical Sudanese art. He wanted to do contemporary international art. So he decided to keep concentrating on that and keep himself to himself. And it's a feeling that he gets if he feels that he can discuss with you his art and you're open to anything and even open to discussing it with him. It doesn't have to something that pleases him. Um, you would be invited to come and see, but he didn't want it to just be a public art. He wanted it to be specialized art. So all his um, deans and all his professors um, who took part in his project came to analyze and discuss his development so that he can complete his life's work. Beautiful. Um, I see over 300 work of art that you brought with you from Sudan. Um, you've kept this artwork for more than 30 years. There was this French um, man that was saying about, about the stolen African arts that are in Europe here, and I was saying how can Africans preserve this art in their return back to Africa. How, tell us, sir, how have you preserved this art? Because they look in the perfect condition till now. How have you done this? Well, mm -hmm. uh, the new that you to to them. لانه في واحد فرنساوي بيقول انه الناس ما بتحفظ الحاجات مم. كويس انت قدير تحفظها ليوم الليلة عشان تطلع زي الجديدة كيف نقول له الحفظ بتاعي انا مم. انا افريد خايف من العمر يروح وانا حاجات ما انجزها عشان كذا انا الشهادة الدقاني فيها أبوي في الانترميدية عن الأخلاق لا هي ذات من الصور ذات قدرت تحفظ كيف مات الشرط لا 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 أنا أنا يعني بذاك من أنا زي ال زي شنو أقول لك أنا زي ال 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 الصرصور بيخش بيخزن حاجات جوا هنا في جحر ولما نيجي الشتاء هو يكون عمل زملين لحياته كلها جوا عشان الشتاء لو طلع بيموت فأنا الأوزاعات بتاع الكلية عندي والاستيون بوق عندي والحاجات بتاعتي كلها وشهاداتي والصور الصغيرة بتاعتي كلها حافظة لكن حفظت الصور كيف عشان ما تكون باهتة وحياتي عشان في الضل لا في الضل وبعدين أنا مدخلة في 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 بلاستيك وغير محفوظة من التراب من أي حاجة he has he is a very much an individual in his own right he still has his school certificates because he tries always to maintain and um, keep his things very neat and tidy and always covered and things like that. And one way of um, achieving that these paintings are not pale or have not gathered dust, he has designed these metal kind of huge boxes where he used to put them so that they're in the dark and they're cool in a hot country like Sudan. Um, it's not always good for the fabric and the sun also pales the colors. So he designed his own kind of metal boxes that he keeps all his artwork in and he used to cover them with plastic because we have sandstorms and uh, so that the colors also don't get dust. So he always had his own way of preserving in different corners in the house his artwork 
according to temperature, light, and everything else. My bedroom, my gallery, I've been in gallery in my bedroom my whole life. And I'm sitting in gallery with my wife. He sleeps in his studio and his gallery. My whole life. Because he, it's very important for him. He always says these are his second group of kids. So to be inspired to do more paintings or to study his own paintings, he needs to go to bed uh, and look at them and wake up looking at them. And I remember that as his daughter because he always slept in his studio. I, I like the way you say it's his second group of kids. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> truly, truly. Yeah. <laughs> so it was also very emotional and very difficult for him to let go and send them to Berlin for people to see them. I mean, it was a struggle, a personal struggle to let go and not have them around him and sort of always look, because since he's been here on a holiday, every day he sees something in a painting and then he draws something and he's like, okay, now this one is finished, but it wasn't finished for years and I didn't know what it was. But also the atmosphere in Berlin makes him just look at things with fresh eyes again because he had a break in between, I think. But he's always constantly like doing something on those paintings. And um, we felt also how sad he was. He's like, oh, I lost my kids. He's like, no, we are your kids. <laughs> but now that he's come, he also realized that the break was quite nice to be able to even finish some things because as a professor and an artist, he would tell you a painting is never finished. So working on them again also inspired him now when he's going back from his holiday, he said, oh, I have a new collection in mind. I want to paint again. And the positive thing that I said to my father is that um, now that the walls are free, it's a, it's a white canvas before you paint it. That means you can do your masterpieces now without being distracted from your previous work. Mm -hmm. And I think that gave a bit of comfort. Yeah. <laughs> Seems very now. Uh, one can see that your, your works are very, very personal to you, mm. and you're, you're a keeper. Mm. But are your works also available for people to buy? And if they are, where can one fa buy, find your work to buy? Mm. ما أي زول وزول أبي عليه هو وأعرف هو ذاته غير فن ولا ما غير فن. هو المنظمات اللي بتعتمد مزيم. هاي ل ل ل ل كلها ل ل ل ل ل مزيمس. He would only sell to a person he feels understands what he's getting and gives him the feel that he will appreciate and maintain it. More valuable for me. Yeah, and he also has a desire um, an interest if there is a museum that wants to buy something so that it lasts generation because one of his things that he's a little bit hesitant about collectors and is that he's worried that a collector might not um, provide access to the public. For him, it's really important that all levels of society have access to his art because he thinks that's fair. But if it's in a gallery, if it's in a museum, if it's in a public place, he would then also feel quite comfortable. Beautiful. Um, we know by now, we have information by now that um, some of the European the Western and great artists have um, been inspired by art from Africa, like people like Van Gogh, you know, mm -hmm. they have been Picasso. Inspiration. Picasso, they got inspiration from ancient African arts. Yeah. Do, do you think they have, they have um, 
um, giving credit to the to the uh, to the Africans for the painting, and should if not, should they right now? How can they give, how can they credit Africans for this uh, uh, inspiration? Uh, Picasso, Pierre, Renaud, they call them Mesho Africa. Whom uh, hal? Uh, uh, credit enough? للفن الافريقي اللي هم عندهم انسبيراسيون واللي بتفتكر انه الناس المفروض تدي ريفرنس اكبر للحته اللي خلتهم ياخذوا انسبيراسيون انه يرسموا. فيكاسو لا بيير هاي في النحل لكن هم المفروض هم جو لانه عارفين هنا في فن اصيل. وبعدين هم ممكن يركبوا بتركيبتهم في الشغل بتاعهم مم. يستفيدوا منه مم. التكنيك الغير وغير وغير فما أدوا الأفارة حقهم yeah, yeah. They said they were, uh, he feels that a lot of big and great artists went to Africa to, um, and got inspired because they found pure art he does not feel that African art has been re referenced enough. Um, and what's not? Presented, يعني معكوس عكسوه بالvalue والقيمة بتاعته. هم استفادوا منه في التكنيك. They they um, they used it also as an inspiration, but as a development for their own art. But he doesn't feel that they have referenced. Um, African art enough and he hopes that this will happen in the future because if you, for him, he always references South Sudan or the Nilotic or uh, the Nilotic tribes as the first inspiration in his childhood where he used to do out of clay, his first sculptures, because of his surrounding, because of his environment, because of the colors, because of the nature. So if you don't reference that inspiration for yourself, I think um, you, you might not bring that across to the public um, enough so that people know where the basic or where the structure of your artwork is because they made their own art out of being in Africa but he desires more reference to African art or Africa itself he hopes that this will happen um, is there, as an artist, is there any art piece in the world that's, that fascinates you? أحلى أحلى حاجة بتحبها شنو مش أنت قلت بيكاسو ال ال سكابشر بتحته ولا هنا رسمة واحدة ولا سكابشر تبيك سكابشر قلتها الأرض بتاع بيكاسو كله لأنه هو مجدد الفن لكن هو ببس من صورة معينة أنت قلتها مرة قلت هي تبيك سكابشر اللي في الأمم المتحدة على أساس هي الحرب بيكاسو he would say as an artist but his favorite piece is the big sculpture. It's called the big sculpture. It's where in Gata? It's in the United Nations. In the United Nations. It's about war. Who painted it? Uh, Picasso made the sculpture. Okay, made the sculpture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Mm. Nice. Um, which artist, you see, I, I don't know if you mentioned Picasso, but I'm just going to ask this question. Mm. Which artist, dead or alive, have you ever looked up to or has inspired you? Mm. Mm. I I said he has um, a painter that he admired throughout his life, and his name is Chagall. He's a French Jewish uh, painter, um, and he's, it's one of his favorites of all time. Mm, beautiful. Um, why have you chosen to become an artist? And if not art, 
what other profession would you have seen yourself in? The I know the I know the artist professional. I know the life the life the creature by me. كل إنسان ربنا أداه أداه إحساس لحاجة معينة يعيشها فأنا عشت لأن أبوي بوتانيكا عشت في الزهور وعشت في اللانسكيب والغير 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 الطيور الملونة والحاجات التي في الجنوب ملت من عمري سبع سنين ابتدي أرسم هذه الأشياء اللي أنا شاهدتها وشفتها واستمرت معي وكمان أخذت حاجة ثانية لها علاقة بالفن اللي هي الأركيتكشر أنا بدرس هسا أركيتكشر ما تطويل آه I'm trying to say it He said every everybody has a destiny He felt that his destiny was to become an artist because from very young age since he was seven years old because his father was a uh, uh, botanica um, that he was surrounded by colors, by flowers, by forms, by nature. Nature is one of his biggest inspirations of art and he started with seven years and older to start drawing and to uh, start playing with clay and started doing sculptures because he had everything around him that made him or created a desire to express himself or reflect what he sees in a form of art. That's what he felt like doing. Everybody said has their own thing that they're drawn to. Um, and the second thing that he okay. found is architecture. But his architectural eye started with simple huts in the Nilotic tribe and in South Sudan. It's the form, the way it's built, the materials, how a village is also built, in which form, why is that house in that place specifically, why is the chief aside from there. This is how he started to think even about forms and housing and stuff like that, but when he went to Khartoum, he started seeing um, older architecture as well and colonial architecture, which made him uh, get in touch with European architecture and Sudanese architecture. Coming to Berlin, it's also a um, different kind of inspiration from different kind of architecture. So he's drawn to art and architecture because it's just who he is. He's just his person. He can't do anything else apart from being that. Um, we have a lot of young um, ones uh, who are aspiring to or looking up to people like you. What would you tell them? For the young Kunstler, what is the goal? For an elf and a little girl, in the Gosia. I will learn my dagger. من ال من ال European art ووو يعكسوا حياتهم كأفارغة في الأرض بتاعهم وووو give up يرفعوا الرأي البيضة to go ahead لغاية ما يصلوا ال الفن العالمي وغيره وهم غادرين وعندهم على صمت صغير وعندهم الحاجات الدوافع كلها للأرض. He said. Don't ever get intimidated or scared of international art. Stay focused on who you are and where you come from. And whatever kind of art you want to do, still um, connect to where you're from. And the richness in art and culture in Africa, um, combine them. Uh, be focused, be structured, don't ever give up on your dreams and make sure that um, you mix or um, strongly, recommend, my, my father strongly recommends 
um, bringing your roots into your project or your creativity um, and expressing that and exhibit that. You don't have to think, oh, European art is better and I need to style it accordingly so that I can be successful. No, you're only going to be successful if you're authentic and if you remain true to yourself and to your roots and where you come from. Oh, um, not, not white, but not white, the uh, year for royal mm. uh, Don't ever give up and put the white flag up. Continue in your way. Be strong and determined. Um, are you planning to an exhibition? In, uh, is, there, is there any uh, way we, can, we are going to see us work in the nearest future? Are you planning an exhibition in Germany, Berlin, or whatever? The next Ausstellungen, the Ausstellungen Jaya. The Ausstellungen Jaya, my end is Nas 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 Martin. Well, the plan is in October to be part of Moon Art Fair, which is in the Elb Philharmonie in Hamburg. Apart from that, we have um, a few invitations to participate in art fairs and exhibitions, but outside of Germany. But the plan is hopefully when he comes back in a few months to exhibit um, with the permission of the University of the Arts Berlin. He's hoping to be able to exhibit in his college as a thank you for giving him his scholarship and for bringing him all his way and making him be who he is today. That's the future plan. So Berlin would be the University of the Arts that we're going to well, ask and see if they're interested. And finally, to you, uh, can you kindly tell us we have, on what website can, or online, how can we see some of his work online? Well, you can go to Shibir Nailotic Gallery. Um, it's www.shibirnailoticgallery.com. Um, there's uh, paintings, there's sculptures, there's artist uh, statements, there's a lot of information you can access. There's also at Shibir Nailoti Gallery on Instagram, there's Facebook if you're interested. And if you need any information, we're more than happy to provide information or to collaborate with different artistic ventures. Honestly, thank you very, very much, sir, for giving me such a wonderful time it has been. Knowledge intensively packed in the brain that I, that I just absorbed now. I say thank you for giving me your time. Mm -hmm. It has been a wonderful time. كلمة مقولوا أنا دائما الأحداث الجميلة في حياتي حتى في حياتي في السودان لو جاني يوم جميل بكتب الديت بتاعه التاريخ فهو بالنسبة لي أنا حكتب التاريخ بتعلقه بتاعه ده كيوم جميل. He said uh, most of his beautiful moments in life he always writes down in some book and he felt that it is a special day today and he would write it and remember the amazing and lovely meeting we had with you and we feel honored and pleased that you found the time to spend time with us and for your interest as well. Thank you for giving me this honor, for being the first Plus, First. Beautiful work in Berlin. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you very Absolutely. Much. You're welcome. Thank you.